Six years and nearly 500 clients later, I think it's about time I share with you my story. The things that made me who I am today. The reason I became a personal trainer and online coach, which many of you probably don't know. I'm going to break down my story of where I come from, the things I experienced in my life that led me down the path of health and fitness. And then two, the reasons I actually became a personal trainer, which was kind of on accident. And now today, looking back, after all these transformations, after all these reviews, I can confidently say I'm truly following my passion. I've fallen in love with what I do and helping others. And I'm so excited to share with you how I got here and why I still love doing this today. So let's dive in. I'm super excited to share with you. And I'm excited for you to get to know me a little bit more on a deeper level. So please enjoy. Growing up, I was always known as the fat kid. I grew up on a street with a ton of kids my age. We all played outside on a daily basis. I mean, unlike kids today that are all playing video games and stuff, my generation or the kids that I played with growing up, we were all outside riding bikes. And, you know, something I constantly remember looking back is I was always a little bit chubbier than all my friends. And going through middle school, I actually had a really bad injury where I broke my knee racing dirt bikes. And after that knee injury, I was on crutches for a long time, which again, made me put on even more weight. So during the most pivotal time of my life, where you're in middle school, your hormones are kicking in, you're hitting puberty, all that crazy stuff. I had a little bit of a growth spurt during that time, which helped a little bit. But even then, I was still just a chubbier, chunkier kid. Funny enough, actually, uh, during Christmas break, I went home and I got to see one of my cousins I haven't seen for like eight to 10 years. And the first thing she said when she saw me, she came up to me and goes, oh my gosh, Tyler, what happened to you? You used to be so chubby. And I was just started laughing so hard because really that's, that's how people knew me back then. So during middle school, when I was going through these changes and uh, realizing that I was a little bit chubbier than everyone else, I definitely lacked a lot of confidence. But going into eighth grade, I had another growth spurt where I leaned down a little bit, got a little skinnier, uh, but I still had this little bit of belly. And going into starting to play sports, so going into high school, I started playing soccer and football. And on the soccer team, you know, a lot of the kids were in really great shape, played soccer for almost all their lives. And this was actually my only my second or third year playing soccer at this point. So one, I didn't have that much experience, so I wasn't the best or that good. I worked really hard, but I wasn't that skilled. And then on the football team, same thing. It was my first time ever playing football, so I was not skilled at all, but I just worked really hard. But even then, being the chubbier kid at whatever position I was playing on either team, I got picked on a little bit by my friends. And, you know, the thing is, guys, you know, we tend to uh, tease each other, pick on each other a little bit, and it's all playful. But looking back, I think subconsciously, it did kind of eat away at me a little bit. And over the years, I started to pick up on it more and more. And so what I realized is when I played soccer and was running a ton, I would lose the weight. And then for football, because I'm not a very tall human, I would have to bulk up and put on a bunch of weight so I could play football, so I could play linebacker and running back. Now, this weight fluctuation up and down Looking back now, I realize I was developing unhealthy eating habits where I would overindulge and binge eat during football season and I would go on these splurges of eating five, six, seven thousand calories a day just to put on weight during high school football. When I played high school soccer, I would restrict a ton, I'd be running a ton, doing a ton of cardio. And because of this, I realize now looking back that I had really, really bad relationship with food. So despite knowing what I know now, back during this time of high school, I really was unaware that I had these bad eating habits or that I had these bad relationships with food. But going into college, number one, I was going away for school. So I was moving an hour and a half, two hours away from my hometown, Simi Valley, to come out to Orange County, California, where I was gonna to go to school at Cal State Fullerton. And because I was moving, I genuinely wanted to reinvent who I was. I wanted to show up at that school as a different person. 
I wanted to have a different level of confidence. Well, and also because I was going to be alone, I wanted to make sure I had the confidence to be living on my own. And so I wanted to reinvent that in myself. And so over my summer after senior year, I focused every ounce of my attention on getting healthy. I started reading, I started watching ton of YouTube videos, I started buying tons of workout programs, I started trying everything and anything I could find, and I followed it to a T. This is actually when I discovered full body workouts. I started working out three days a week, full body, and taking it extremely seriously. This is when I started being really consistent in the gym, and actually since then, I have been consistent ever since. And I think that this was one of the most transformative times in my life because not only was I taking a big step in my life of going off on my own, moving away from my family, I also regained confidence in myself. I saw myself in a positive light for the first time. I was happy with what I saw in the mirror. I was extremely confident in my skills as a human to live on my own. And ultimately, I was ready. I was ready to go tackle the world, go experience something new, and try a bunch of new things. So going into college, I still had this passion for soccer. So when I came to Cal State Fullerton, I was a mechanical engineering major, funny enough, which has nothing to do with what I do now, except kind of, sort of. I mean, mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering of the human body is basically kinesiology, if you think about it. But... Anyways, when I went to call when I came to college at Cal State Fullerton, I wanted to still play soccer. So I tried out for the club soccer team and ended up playing there for four semesters. What we did every semester is we qualified to go to nationals. We flew out to amazing places like Alabama, Oregon, Arizona. We went to these big national tournaments. We got to play at the highest level, playing some of the best colleges in the nation, which is exactly what I wanted from soccer. I knew I wasn't good enough to go pro, but I worked my ass off and I was willing to earn my spot as a starter and get the experience I wanted. And after that, I was pretty much done. Also, during those first two years of college, I was in a fraternity. And one of the biggest things I remember was after I stopped playing soccer, that summer, I put on 10 to 15 pounds of muscle because I was actually able to cook and eat better food because I was living in a house and not dorms anymore. I also was taking care of my recovery. I was also hydrated. I was also not drinking as much. I was extremely consistent inside the gym. And also, because I wasn't running five to seven miles on a daily basis for soccer, I put on so much muscle, so much to the point where my friends in my fraternity started coming up to me and asking, Psst, hey, Tyler, what are you taking? And I was like, <laughs> like, what are you talking about, dude? And uh, they would all like trip out. They all thought I was on something. I was like, no, dude, I take creatine. I work out three days a week. I eat a shit ton of protein. Uh, I was eating like pro probably close to like 200 grams of protein. I only weighed like 160, 165. And they were all, they all didn't believe me. But I can promise you, I would be a whole lot bigger if I was taking stuff. Uh, I'm really not as big as you may think or see I am on camera. So me seeing a ton of change, a ton of results in a relatively short amount of time from what my friends saw, but what they didn't see was the two and a half years before that I actually put in and just now they were starting to see the massive change because I wasn't playing soccer. I could put all of my focus, energy, and attention into my working out. What came of this? It was around March 2018. I started an Instagram. I started posting because all of my friends kept telling me, Tyler, you should share this stuff. Tyler, you should go make a program. Tyler, I want you to help me with my stuff. I'm like, dude, I'm going to start an Instagram. I'll share everything with you. I started giving my friends programs. I started helping them with their nutrition. And I got this really weird feeling. It was so unique. I've never in my life helped someone like this, where I saw their confidence increase, their happiness, their energy, their mood, their sleep. All aspects of my friends' lives were changing, and it was so impactful for me. And I could tell you nothing, nothing feels better 
than helping someone else improve their health, their happiness. And that feeling is exactly what drove me to become a personal trainer. Around this same time I had this realization, I went all in. I changed my major from mechanical engineering to kinesiology, and holy shit, were those classes a thousand times easier. Not the actual materials I was learning, but the fact that I actually enjoyed what I was learning, the stuff actually fascinated me, it made school so much easier. From engineering to kinesiology, it took me three years and I went through all of my lower and upper division classes and got my kinesiology degree. So just to rewind back a little bit, in March of 2018 is kind of where I started my Instagram. If you scroll all the way back, you can probably find my first post, in which I posted from my frat house I was living at the time, which is pretty funny. And then fast forward a little bit, I'll post it almost every single day going into October of 2018, where I actually got a random DM from Jamil at self-made training facility in Orange County. And I saw his message and he was like, hey man, I really like your content. You have some good stuff and it seems like you know what you're doing. You should come check out our gym. I was like, hmm, let's go check it out. Maybe I'll get like a free workout or something. Let's go check it out. So I went in there and he was like, hey man, so essentially, you know, welcome to self-made. Basically, you sign a contract, you, your first month's free, your second month you get half off, your third month you pay full rent, and other than that, you get to run your business here. We don't control how many clients you get. We don't give you clients. You have to figure that all out on your own, but you can have as many clients as you want or as few as you want. Basically, the limits are endless. I was like, hmm, that's pretty cool. So you're telling me I can help as many people as I want. I can generate as much income and impact as I can dream of. He's like, yeah, sign me up. That day, I signed the contract. No plan, no business structure, no clue how to run a business, how to find clients, or how to do this. But you bet your ass I was going to figure it out. So from that day forward, I dedicated my entire life, aside from finishing school, to helping my clients, to educating myself, to figuring out how to find clients. Since then, I've spent nearly $100,000 on mentors, coaches, programs, mentorships, so many different things just to learn how to be a better coach, how to build a business, how to ultimately impact more lives. And that's actually what led me here to creating YouTube videos and podcasts to share with you my story, to share with you the things that I've learned, the challenges I face, the failures I've had, so you don't have to. And since I've made this decision, so many amazing things have happened in my life. I've been able to compete in powerlifting. I've been able to compete in men's physique show. I've been able to impact over 500 lives. I now mentor other coaches and trainers inside my gym. I now have a team that works alongside me, two assistant coaches and an assistant that have all come together to do one thing. And that is what I have created since being a trainer. That is the business. That's the vision. That's the mission behind what I'm doing. And that is to teach people instead of tell them what to do. There's a sign behind me. And there's a logo I wear on my chest. And almost every day I wear this. And it's TNT. It stands for to be taught, not told. Because my ultimate mission as a coach is to teach my clients, to teach the people that follow me how to do these things. Too often, as a coach and as a trainer, the things I saw from other people I was surrounded by was them just telling people what to do all the time. Saying, do this, do that, do this, do that, and I was fed up with it because it did nothing for that individual. All it did was tell them what to do that day, that week, and eventually what happened is they failed when they went off on their own. That's not what I want for you. That's not what I want for my clients. What I want is to teach you everything. 
as we go on this journey, I want you to learn so you can actually apply it to your life. And so you don't need me forever. This might sound crazy because most coaches aren't like this, but my goal is actually not to work with you in the future. I want to work with you for a short period of time, give you the tools you need, and say, love you, peace out, good luck, you're going to kill it. You don't need me anymore. And that sounds crazy, but that's genuinely why I'm here. That's genuinely why I'm creating this content to impact so many lives and to actually help people sustain results without needing me to hold their hand. So that being said, I really hope that you learned something new about me today. I hope you learned about my story and I hope it may have impacted you in some way. And I hope that in some way it inspires you to take action to go all in, to follow your dreams, do what you're truly passionate about. Because I would not be where I am today if I didn't take action, if I didn't go all in. And honestly, I'd have no idea where I'd be today without that decision. I hope you subscribe, follow, and stay connected for the next one. And thank you again for watching. I greatly appreciate your time. Much love, Coach Tyler. Peace.